Okay, great. All right, so Liz, do you um, want to start, you and Art, about um, any COVID-19 updates? Sure, so there is one order of business specifically related to COVID-19. Um, as part of some of the recent guidelines and acts that have come down from the state and the governor's office, they're granting municipalities the ability to um, postpone their tax payment due dates in certain cases, um, and, and or the ability to waive interest on any late payments through um, June 29th. So after speaking with the town's tax collector, um, she recommended that we keep the May 1st due date in place um, just for her own record keeping and everything to kind of keep things straight, especially for people who have automated payments and that sort of thing. However, she did recommend that you take an official vote to waive any interest fees um, through that June 29th date that's allowable for us to do. Um, so I would ask that you take that vote now and it would be waiving the interest on any um, late payments for tax bills that were due on May 1st, waiving that through June 29th of 2020. So moved. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Um, otherwise, relative to COVID-19, um, things have been going pretty well. We've continued to have our weekly conference calls with the townhouse staff. Um, our police and fire departments participated today in a parade at Beth Israel in Plymouth, just to show their appreciation to all of the healthcare workers there. Um, so that was a nice event like it made people happy, spread some joy. Um, at the Woodlands, we were having some logistical issues as far as getting the brown bag meals and everything to them. Um, joy Marvel worked very hard on um, a setup for them. And basically they have everything figured out now. They even went so far as to put tape on the floor to make sure that people would stay the six feet apart and that they have a more organized system in place for people coming down to the common areas to collect those brown bags. Uh, so Joy deserves to be commended on that. She's put an enormous amount of time into getting these meals out to people. And we were actually called upon to see if we could provide meals and services to a facility in Carver and also to a facility in Marshfield. So right now we're kind of working on that. Um, we don't wanna overextend ourselves right now and take on more than what we can reasonably handle, but we are trying to be helpful to the other communities as we're able to. Um, Justicaros has delivered some stuff to Marshfield and um, likewise, we'll work with the folks from the Woodlands from their corporate to see if there's anything that could be done for their other facility in Carver. Um, but we're trying to be mindful of our own resources and of Joy and Jim's time and also the fire chief's time. So if we're available and able to help these other communities, we're willing to do so. But we wanna make sure that Plimpton seniors and Plimpton residents are being served first with the limited resources that we do have. Um, Sounds great. Sounds additionally, great. Um, the transfer station, everything is going well. Uh, they made some modifications to the initial layout that they had there and swapped out some of the containers again after seeing how it went the first day. And it seems like everybody's finally found their groove. Um, we also used it as a good opportunity for education. So now we're at a spot where the employees have adequate personal protective equipment. They're following all of the social distancing protocols and they're doing a wonderful job keeping the facility open. And I think that everybody feels more confident now that they're being properly protected as well. I'd like to just reinforce that. I was there uh, today and uh, very well done. And um, also the town of Hanson was kind enough to loan us their electronic message board sign. So that's going to have um, a home 
we had put it outside the gates the other day and then we had to fix a programming issue, but that will just reflect the new hours of the transfer station so that if somebody does show up, say on a Tuesday, where currently we're not gonna be open on Tuesdays, they, they're not parked out there wondering what's happening or if we're opening. Um, so we have those hours out on the sign as well. Um, police and fire, they are continuing with all of their disinfecting protocols. Um, Scott Materna, who's actually the building maintenance director from the town of Halifax, has been kind enough to keep coming in periodically to disinfect both buildings. And he also loaned our fire department um, a set of basic equipment. So anytime the designated ambulance that does a COVID-19 possible run, um, the fire department's able to go ahead and fog the ambulance and keep, keep it disinfected and available for use. So that's been very helpful. And otherwise, everything's pretty well status quo. Um, we have received some general questions from the public as far as people looking for inspections or who have permitting questions. And what we've been telling people is that um, for the building department, including wiring, plumbing, um, all of those inspectional services, that our inspectors are following the protocols that most others are throughout the Commonwealth. And they will do exterior inspections or they will inspect um, interior new construction that's not occupied. And Kathy Canizo from the building department has been doing an outstanding job. Um, she communicates with everybody on a regular basis. And we just allow people to mail in their filing fees and to process it that way. And she goes to the building periodically and makes sure that everything's up to date and that those funds are being deposited. Um, it's, it's becoming evident, I think, that maybe when all of this settles down, I think we should look at a way of instituting some sort of online permitting, um, at least for very basic applications and also we do have the UniPay option for tax bills, and I believe some of them from the town clerk's office, they have an account with them, but I think it would be helpful for some people just for convenience. I know there is a fee associated with it, and it does get passed on to the consumer, um, so it might not be ideal for everyone, but I think in a time like this, people would appreciate having the option to submit filing fees for permits and stuff electronically as well. It would save them a trip to the post office and save them a stamp during a time like this. So I think that's something we might want to pursue, um, even if we wait until after this is over, but just to offer more options to our residents um, for doing some of these transactions. And that's pretty much it for my update. I'll turn it over to Art and also Art, um, could you just confirm for people as far as Board of Health inspections, um, where you're an elected board, are you following a similar process that the health agents will come out for exterior inspections or new construction? Yes, we are. Um, obviously, we're, we can't meet um, and go over records in, in the office. Uh, we can't have the health agent in and, and like we normally meet. So there are some things that, that we are putting off because if, if it's not an emergency, if it's an emergency, we'll, we'll deal with it um, and we'll figure out a way. Uh, we have two that are basically non-emergencies right now. And I know quite folks might like to get on with their life and, you know, do whatever they're going to do. But, you know, basically it's, it, they're not an emergency and uh, I'm not going to put people in danger and get them together in a room to go over past history and, and review things like that. Uh, it's just not fair to, you know, to our, our employees and, and uh, our board members either. So uh, again, if it's an emergency, we deal with it. We've got uh, our new health and uh, health agent, uh, Kevin Ford is his name. Um, he has uh, completed his paperwork and, uh, I left it for him on the magnet board outside of the front door and he picked it up 
and then he left it. He completed it and left it there. Um, so it, the treasurer's office has processed that. Um, as a matter of fact, just today, and uh, he is also the health agent in Carver. What a surprise! Uh, but we're lucky to have Kevin. Uh, in addition to being a health agent, he's also a registered engineer. So um, he understands septic systems and and everything like that. So we're we're again we're fortunate to have Kevin on board now. Uh, we went for a a little bit of time at the Board of Health without a health agent, and uh, uh, our friend Kathy Drynan did step up and and step in for, uh, and help us out in uh, in a number of occasions. Um, I will also report that uh, the Board of Health has received a $4,000 grant. Uh, the check was received uh, today, uh, and we, are, we will be getting another $4,000 grant. And this is to go uh, to pay expenses for anything related to this COVID-19 virus, which could be Salaries, wages, uh, materials, um, and I'm, I'm looking into uh, some other things that we uh, I have to inquire because of the grant that uh, um, Liz signed there a week or two ago. Well, I think it might have been last week. And we'll, uh, I'm going to see if we can use the money for uh, some COVID-related things, but uh, not necessarily Board of Health, so, which may help the town, too. Um, and let's see what else. Oh, there was one, there was one issue um, that has come up, um, which is the, the library. And I know I received an email from John, uh, I believe it was yesterday, uh, that was one of the 20 20 emails I received from the state. And John, I think you were the only one that wasn't from the state or the Department of Public Health. So thank you. Okay. Uh, we, uh, it would be, we have told just about everybody, or we have told everybody, Liz, I should say, um, that not to enter the building only um, absolutely necessary things go on in, in our buildings. Um, and my feeling from the contamination point of view would be that, that we keep it that way. Um, I think it's important. Uh, certainly the Board of Selectmen manage the properties and if, and if they want to take the responsibility, um, you know, God bless you. Um, but I, from from everything that I've read, I, I, I wouldn't do it. Um, there are too many people that don't know how they got the, the virus. They haven't been around anybody. So they think um, it, it just spreads far too easily. Um, I, I'm personally concerned about it. So those are my thoughts uh, and, and my views uh, on the subject. But um, I... I Keep it as it is right now, and, and it seems to be working. Uh, and just just those critical functions that the town needs to keep moving along uh, would be recommended. Can I ask a question? So, sure. is the, so the library is closed now, correct? Right. There's not no critical activity happening in the library. Right. Okay. In and other words. I, but I, I, I guess my point, and it, it's not, it's not that any function is more valuable or less valuable than any other function. But is there a need? Um, and I, I have knowledge of, of uh, in, an individual who got the virus, um, has no idea where they picked it up. Um, it, it just. It, it, it's too contagious, and, it, some, and some, some people have had it and uh, uh, didn't even know they had it. There was one fellow that died, I think it was today, and they, he died, and they tested him, and he, he had the virus, but he didn't know it. 
I, uh, my proposal, Ooh. just so, since I instigated this, the library's been closed for, I guess, about three weeks now since we've been in lockdown. And my, my thought was, Debbie has asked in the past that she be allowed to go in and work. And since it's three weeks, I assume that the virus is passed. But if the Board of Health says there's still an issue, then obviously we'd pull back. But the proposal was that she be the only one allowed access, that no patrons, no staff be, go near the library, and just to serve her to allow her to go in and work from her office where she's got a lot of papers and things that need to be done. But if there's a health risk, obviously I'll withdraw that. Well, John, the only reason I say that, and it's not, I, yeah, and I would agree that anything that was in the building, uh, maybe on the 10th of March or whatever, is, is gone now. Um, it cannot survive uh, that long. But my, my point is, and, and maybe I didn't, get it across quite as I should have, uh, is that what if, what if somebody brought it into the building and, and didn't even know it? But nobody's been no. in the building now. We're, we're not no, asking no, no. any... You no, know, no, I don't no. want to make a big thing out of this. We can just let it go and, you know, hopefully this is going to cure itself and we'll be back in business in May, maybe. Um, yeah, I hope I so. Could I um, go back to the permitting? I, I, Art, I fully hear you on um, sort of prioritizing emergencies, non-emergencies. Um, my only concern is that um, this might well stretch quite a bit further, and it does start getting to be a hardship um, for people mid-projects of various types. and. Um, I know you guys don't want to meet in person, but if this is going to drag on, is there no way of finding a, a, a way to keep the permitting process moving uh, so people aren't uh, stuck in the mud for month after month? Yeah, I think, well, in, in one case that I'm, that I'm thinking about, a, a simple holdback would, would solve the issue. And that's done all the time in real estate. Um, so, you know, if, if there's a workaround, and I think what's important and what we have had to learn, too, we meaning the town, the state, um, the country, is that it can't be um, business as usual. We, we have to adapt and learn to, you know, come up with – different and creative ideas um, and certainly and knock on wood we have not had any emergencies um, outside of the COVID-19 virus in the Board of Health um, and that being somebody who can't use this septic system at all um, uh, you know and, and in which case I don't know we may have to ask fire department for suits and, and, and everything else, you know, to, to deal with the situation. Um, the health agent was out looking at an issue, um, which was brought to the board of health, uh, attention, uh, was just the other day. And I think it might've been Tuesday. And, um, but that was outside and, uh, not entering a building. Um, and of course he knows, he knows better than a lot of us uh, what can and can't be done. Um, so, I mean, we are we're working with people, but, um, you know, sometimes you have to be a little creative, and I don't necessarily mean the town. I mean the individuals or, or perhaps their realtor, um, and, you know, just, just be creative. Um, and it, it's not always being I, – I, I received another call on that issue today, Mark. Um, and this is from a – was a call from a former employee. Um, and it's, it's just nuts. Um, I've had enough. I'm all done. You know, I, I totally – 
I totally agree. And I, I, I think we all have to be creative and a little flexible in that. I, I just, I, I, I hope we don't get to a place that people are waiting for a permit that, you know, they're, they're waiting for week after week and month after month. Uh, it's brutal. Um, and I've, yeah, no. I fully get the inside inspections. I mean, the outside inspections feel like a different situation. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and, and, and we, uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, uh, well, I, again, I mean, I, I just, I, I fully respect uh, uh, particularly the Board of Health, protecting the health of the Board of Health, but I hope we can, do, we can all be creative and flexible and just not leave people too much out on the ledge or as best we can. Yeah, no, and, and we're not leaving them on the ledge. Um, you know, I, I've offered alternatives uh, to people and it can be done. It's legal. Um, and if they choose not to do it, well, okay, then that's their business. Um, and then I'll just, I'll leave it at that. Um, we, you know, we will, we'll do anything we can, but a particular case is going to require a meeting of engineers and the plans that are in the office, uh, new plans, going to have to be sent all of that out to a, a consulting engineer. I mean, we, we just, we can't do it remotely from a laptop because all of the records in the Board of Health are, are not electronic. I hear you. So, you know, we're kind of, we're, we're stuck and it's, it's such a complicated, this particular one is such a complicated issue. Um, it's it's not just cut and dried. Um, I wish it was, because I'd like nothing better than to put it to bed and get it behind me. I know you do. <laughs> and by the way, Mark, thanks for your help last week. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to help. All right. So, Art, is that it for um, Board of Health on uh, COVID nineteen update? It would be, yeah, uh, we've got 4,000 in the bank and we've got 4,000 more on the way. So <laughs> Great I, think news. We ought to have a board, I think we ought to have a board meeting and a rover uh, when it opens up. <laughs> 2023? <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> John, do you have an update about what's going on with the school? Uh, so we've, we're com we've completed or about to complete the second week of... Um, you know, distance learning. Um, the administration sent out a survey to parents, uh, teachers, and also the secondary students to get their feedback about what it is that, how it's been going. Um, you know, I think the greatest challenge that, that they're having is that you have a very wide spectrum uh, of to the point of, of people not being able to access technology, whether that's because they don't have it, even though we've offered and, and have been provided, I think over 400 Chromebooks uh, throughout the district to students. And if you recall, the high school students all have Chromebooks. Um, but for people who don't have that, then they've been trying to provide that. Um, so you've got a spectrum to that and, or that they can't access it because you know, uh, of, of family issues and, and other things like that. Uh, all the way to the other end of the spectrum where, you know, students aren't feeling like they're getting enough work. Um, and certainly when you deal with the lower grades, you know, that's a whole different, whole different set of, I mean, you, you know, you can't deliver lectures to second graders. It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work in the classroom. It's certainly not gonna work in a computer. Um, so there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of learning and, and of course, you know, the whole public school system is set up to provide equal access to all students. You cannot provide equal access in, a, in this environment without significantly different set of plans and circumstances to, to get us there. Right. So that's the huge challenge that they're working through. The hope is, is that with the survey that will bring additional information in that will allow them to, to adjust what is being done for the various um, grades. 
And this isn't just about the students, this is about teachers. I mean, they've had, they have their lesson plans and have taught you know, their subjects or class in a certain way, some of them for many years, and now it's all been dumped out on the floor and they've got to try and pick it back up and figure out how to make it work. You know, so it's not just the technology, you know, and for some of us in the business world, Zoom is kind of home, although it's a little too much home at this point. Um, when you're sitting in the same spot for eight and a half hours a day looking at the same computer and you're not even walking to a conference room or talking to anyone in person, you know, but so you, you, you do that from a class and that's a whole different thing. And some students are going to be better at doing online learning and others, it just doesn't work. So a lot of challenges there, but they're getting this feedback, which I think is really good. And to try and figure out what to do, you know, for the next period, um, I, I would be at this point shocked or or really pleasantly surprised if there was an ability for schools to resume in May 4th. Um, I, I just, I don't see that as, as a reality based on everything that we're reading and even understanding that the state isn't even, this state isn't even supposed to hit peak for another couple weeks. So this likely is going to continue for the school year. And I think a number, we've had a number of discussions with the administration that they need to plan for the fall. Not necessarily that school won't resume, but school might be different when it resumes. But what happens if we have a flare up again in the, in the colder weather, you know, uh, toward later uh, in the year? How do, we, how do we move from in-class school to remote learning without it being, uh, you know, this again? And, and this, this was never planned for. We planned for, you know, intruders in schools. We planned for, we even do tornado drills. We do all sorts of things to plan for. This was never anything that anyone had planned for. You know, we last happened 102 years ago and things were a little different then. So um, it's all net new. Uh, I think everyone's kind of doing the best they can. It's, but it's very different, not only district to district, but, um, you know, classroom to classroom because of different skills and all that. And everyone isn't on the level playing field. So it's a challenge. Um, you know, I wonder if sometimes if Jill thinks this was a great idea to become the superintendent, but you know, uh, she, she deserves a lot of credit for handling a lot of varying things from, you know, bus contracts to teacher issues, to curriculum, to all of this. And her administration, I think is doing uh, a really good job, all things considered. So we just keep, we keep kind of plugging along and doing that. And we'll be a, um, Plimpton will have its school committee on the 23rd um, at five o'clock as, as scheduled. Um, we're planning to, at that point, to at least vote the budget that we had talked with FinCom about. Um, because remember the FinCom meeting happened right after our last meeting. So we voted the budget one way, we're gonna tweak that. But with the understanding that as we continue to move down this path uh, and not knowing what's coming next as far as the state budget or anything like that, that we may have to adjust at some point. Uh, we will also hold a um, joint meeting of Silver Lake and Union 31 at 6.30 on, um, on the 23rd as well, uh, where we will we'll talk some about about the learning and about other any other budget issues and things like that. And I believe we also have a uh, bus contract that we need to address. Um, and even though we try to do some different things, guess what? We had one bid as usual. Okay. I don't know what to say. <laughs> oh, that's, that's the basic stuff there. Um, I, I would just, if you let me offer just a, just a thought, I, I think that in this time where, you know, we're, it's not downtime because we're all doing a lot of different things, but I, I, I do think, and I spoke to the superintendent uh, yesterday about this, is that we need to think forward as well. And I think we're starting to see that we need some various options to do things a little bit differently. And I would just encourage, you know, all of us to think of creative ways to keep things moving when this doesn't, end as soon as we would all like it to, like two weeks ago, right? Um, and even for, you know, even for inspections, you know, it's like, and this is not just, board, this is just overall inspections. I mean, maybe we need to get creative even with things like 
uh, virtual indoor inspections with, you know, a FaceTime and the whole thing. I think we got to push on some of these things because the other piece of, I think, of doing some of this work, especially with some of the folks in the trades, is to keep people working, you know, and if we can't do the inspections, everything stops, you know, on, on jobs. And if there's a safe way for folks to continue to move things forward and for people to continue to get paid, that takes off a little bit of stress from, you know, the overall economy and, and from some for our local folks, because I mean, a lot of these folks are local. So. I think it's just that's our that's the hard part is to sort of uh, for us all to think creatively and and find ways that we can do things to keep things moving because if we're if we're sort of still with this to the beginning of June if that's when the next date moves it may still be past that and then we just have to think we have to start moving things again so this is far too much fun <laughs> Well, that's a good thought, John. I think um, that is the big takeaway from this is it's, um, it, we need to learn to do things um, differently and be more efficient and not have, have everything necessarily be, um, you know, be face to face. So um, hopefully we'll have plenty of time to get this sorted out um, and start to work towards that um, in the future, because that is um, something I think that's going to be the new reality. But but we'll figure it out one day at a time. So thank you, John. Um, did anybody else have anything they wanted to add? I'm fine. Okay. No. All right. Um, our thanks again to the Board of Health uh, and uh, the guys at the transfer station for being so responsive to um, concerns and really um, I'm glad that uh, they're feeling more comfortable, the people that you've got working down there with um, the changes that you've made, because that was definitely um, a big concern was, um, was their safety. And I'm glad that uh, you guys have come up with something that, um, that they feel much more comfortable with. And, and that sounds like a great plan. Well, I want you to know that I woke up at four o'clock in the morning with that plan in my head. <laughs> that was a tiring day that day. Well, it's a good thing you remembered it. <laughs> oh, no, I, I got right up and I wrote it down. Perfect. Over to, over to Robbie that morning. Great. That's great. All right. Well, if we've got nothing else, I'll make a motion that, um, that we adjourn and um, I'll see everybody again next week. I'll second that. Okay. All right. Have a safe week. Take care. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.